there's something very quiet happening in our food stores. You won't hear it being spoken about by food sellers or find it written on the label, but GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, are infiltrating everyday foods like cereals, oils, flour, salad dressings, mayonnaise, chips, cookies, even infant formula. My guest today is going to talk about why we should say no to GMOs. Jeffrey M. Smith is the leading spokesperson on the health dangers of genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. He's the best-selling author of Seeds of Deception, exposing industry and government lies about the safety of the genetically engineered foods you're eating. And he's founder of the Institute for Responsible Technology and the Campaign for Healthier Eating in America, a revolutionary movement to remove GMOs from the U.S. food supply. Jeffrey has counseled world leaders from every continent campaigned to end the use of genetically engineered bovine growth hormone, also known as RBGH, you'll see that on milk a lot, and influenced the first state laws in the U.S. regarding GMOs. He also proposed legislation to remove GM foods from school lunches. Jeffrey is also an independent filmmaker who produced the films Hidden Dangers in Kids' Meals and Your Milk on Drugs, Just Say No. He writes an internationally syndicated column and has a regular blog on the Huffington Post. He joins us today by phone. Welcome to your supernatural life, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Great. You know, about 10 years ago, I sat in a synagogue in Marin County, California, and listened to a sermon from the rabbi on Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day of the year in the Jewish religion. And the topic of his talk was genetically modified food. Um, He spoke with such fervor about how it was going against God to mess with the DNA of food. And at the time, I thought it was odd to speak about that subject on that particular day, but his message has stayed with me for all these years. And what you're writing about and lecturing about is so critical to our health and well-being. Can you define GMOs for us, and why were they developed in in the first place? Genetically modified organisms, GMOs, are, uh, in this case, we're talking about plants, uh, which have been inserted with genes. The DNA of the plants have been inserted with genes from bacteria or viruses, typically. It could also be animal genes and whatnot. And the primary reason why companies genetically engineer crops, and there's eight food crops right now that are GMOs, uh, is so that the crops can drink poison, so that they, you can spray the crop with a normally deadly herbicide and it allows the genetically modified crop, like Roundup Ready soybeans, to survive a normally deadly dose of Roundup herbicide. So Monsanto, which sells both the seeds and the herbicide, sells the two as a package. So the seed sales increase the sales of their herbicide. There's also a smaller uh, percentage of crops that are designed to produce poison. They produce a toxin called Bt, which is designed to kill insects that eat the plant. It splits open their stomach. Uh, However, there's overwhelming evidence right now that the assumptions about that BT is safe for human beings is false and that it's probably causing or contributing to diseases in the U.S. population. And these diseases, I mean, we can't really know for sure if people start to feel bad in a few years. We can't, it's hard to point finger and say, well, that's because I'm eating genetically modified soy, right? Is that, that's part of the thing that it's exactly. so hard There's to no track. Exactly. clinical trial. You know, the FDA scientists originally wanted there to be long-term studies because they said GMOs might create hard-to-detect allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems. And just as you say, they were concerned that it would be very hard for the companies to detect the problems and for us to look at it. They, they suggested that we monitor the population, but that's not even been done anyway. So the FDA scientists were ignored because the person in charge of policy was Monsanto's former attorney and later Monsanto's vice president, Michael Taylor. And while he was in charge, his policy claimed that the agency wasn't aware of any information showing that GMOs were significantly different. And on that basis said no testing is necessary, no labeling is necessary. In fact, it's entirely up to the biotech industry to determine if their foods are safe. And even they can even introduce it to the market without even telling the FDA. Now, documents made public from a lawsuit years later show that the internal secret memos of the FDA contradicted the policy, but that didn't stop the policy from still being 
the way that we have to, the way that we're dealing with GMOs. Unfortunately, the Obama administration has taken that same person, Monsanto's former attorney, and put them as the food safety czar in the United States this past summer. Well, so what's going to happen to the organic farming, uh, you know, if Obama's administration is appointing Michael Taylor? Well, the, the farming side is more run by the USDA, but I'm in, I'm, they also have packed that house with Monsanto, Mindy. I was uh, disturbed to see that the former governor of Iowa, uh, Tom Vilsack, is taking a very strong probiotic position as Secretary of Agriculture, and they just uh, uh, nominated and are about to install two more Monsanto-linked people into key USDA positions. So wow. we're in a situation where... Uh, the, the biotech industry has really infiltrated the government, and we can't rely on the government. I mean, even Obama specifically told us that he would require labeling of genetically modified foods as a requirement if he got into office, and that we haven't seen that yet either. So right. our Institute for Responsible Technology is promoting a consumer-driven tipping point to knock GMOs out of the market based on making them a marketing liability when even a small percentage of consumers stop using brands that contain GM ingredients. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Like you say in your book that most of our food in our local grocery store is contaminated with GM food ingredients. Is that just mainly processed foods, or what, what do we need to be aware of? Absolutely. It's mainly processed foods. The eight, the, there's four or five major GM crops. Soy and corn are the most pre pre prevalent because of the derivatives are in practically all processed foods. Last year, genetically modified sugar was introduced from sugar beets, again, in a lot of different foods. There's also two oils, cottonseed oil and canola oil, as well as the soy and corn oil. So basically, if you get something that's cooked in vegetable oil, it's probably been cooked in a genetically modified brew. There's also Hawaiian papaya and a little bit of zucchini and crookneck squash. But those are very minor crops compared to the soy, corn, cotton, canola, and sugar beets. So um, I'm just I, my 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 mind is racing here because you know so many people are eating out also and then the restaurants most of them are, are using vegetable oils and canola oil and you, you know I'm sure even that the you, you ask well what kind of oil do you use they don't know if it's if it's genetically modified or not I'm sure right and the, I know. The, actually what what happens is if you if they say vegetable oil as I go to a restaurant I always call up in bed so I stop it and say, what oil do you cook in? If they say vegetable oil, I say, do you have pure olive oil or uh, something? Do like, you have a dish that's not cooked in any oil? Because if they cook every dish in vegetable oil, then I wouldn't eat at the restaurant because mm -hmm. I don't eat genetically modified foods. We have a new, sh a new uh, website. We haven't even announced it. Uh, I can tell you t uh, today. It's called non-gmoshoppingguide.com. Is, is on it that live? Site, uh, people can non-gmo shopping guide. Dot com. You can see all of the different brands that are non-GMO and the tips of how to avoid GMOs. It even describes how to avoid GMOs in restaurants. That's excellent. And so the site is live today? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's live. We just haven't done a proper announcement. We're writing the press release now, but we wanted to get it out so people could use it who are visiting our normal site at responsibletechnology.org. Great. That's terrific. Uh, that would be really helpful for people, I think. If you're just joining us, this is Beth Greer, and I'm talking with Jeffrey Smith about genetically modified foods on your supernatural life here on Green 960. So let's talk a little bit about the health effects. You know, what damaging effects have you have you uh, talked about and documented that GMOs can cause to our health? Well, there's a lot of uh, varieties. Uh, we could do allergies, reproductive problems, and toxicity. Uh, allergies are, are likely to be uh, a, a major uh, casualty of genetically modified food. Soon after GM soy was introduced to the UK, soy allergies skyrocketed by 50%. Uh, food allergies in the US doubled in about the five years after GMOs were introduced. We know that uh, in soy and corn and papaya, the gene that is inserted produces a protein in each case that has properties of known allergens and might be allergenic. In addition, the process of inserting the gene causes massive collateral damage in the plant, which could then create higher levels of existing allergens or completely new allergens, and both appear to have happened already in the soy and corn on the markets. Uh, there's also higher levels of herbicide residues that might cause 
some kind of reaction, which is in most of the genetically modified crops. And also, uh, mice that were fed genetically modified soy had dramatically suppressed digestive enzymes, as much as 77% reduction. And if you have slower digestion, it can increase your reaction to food. 